Hello, everyone. I want to thank you all for coming to this presentation with Solar United Neighbors. And we're just going to talk a little bit about solar, how you can become a part of our um, uh, co-op. And we're also going to talk about a little bit more in this presentation around PPA. So that being said, I want to introduce my uh, co uh, facilitator, who is also with Solar United Neighbors. And his name is Aaron. Aaron, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Kimberly. Thank you all for joining. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm going to moderate the, um, the webinar. And if we can go to the next slide, just walk you through um, some basics for Zoom. Uh, luckily, we're all pretty familiar with Zoom. Um, but in this case, we're going to be submitting any questions anytime in the chat box. I know there is a question function, but please submit any questions in the chat box. And then after each of the sections, we'll be stopping to address those questions. Um, we're not going to be doing the verbal questions today. And this webinar is being recorded. So we will share a link to the recording with everyone who RSVP'd after this event has ended. So if there is somebody that you know that wasn't able to join, you can go ahead and share it with them. Next slide. Okay, good. So with COVID, just uh, what we're doing differently as far as our programming in COVID or, and co-ops, health and safety, of course, are our number one priority. So we work with partners, uh, monitoring conditions, and it's really important to note that solar is vital. It's vital to resiliency, job creation, clean air, reducing energy burden. And so it is an important part as we recover a new sense of normal. Uh, the way that we've responded as an organization is that all information sessions like this or online webinars are selection committees in which in participants select the installers are going to be all online and review proposals virtually. Additionally, we're working with installers uh, to confirm and share their safety protocols. One major difference is, is that in-person site visits as part of the co-op are now going to be in a virtual uh, format. So those virtual site visits will minimize contact. And then during installation or any sort of customer contact, we're monitoring protocol for installations. Uh, before I turn it over to Kimberly, again, going to remind everybody that uh, this is interactive and that after each section, we're going to stop for some questions and that we are running on a bit of a tight time frame. We're going to aim to end at 7 p.m. We have to be out of the Zoom by 7.15 p.m. So there's going to be a lot of information to cover. And again, we really appreciate you joining us. Uh, also appreciate uh, Brian Hacker from Solar Energy World, who's going to speak later on power purchase agreements. Kimberly? Thank you. And I'm just going to give um, a little bit of brief time so that Brian can just introduce himself real quick. Um, and as um, Aaron said, is that we're going to have a hard stop at 7 o'clock. So if I tend to talk a little bit fast because I'm trying to get through things, you know, it's just because we are trying to get a lot, put a lot of information in in a short amount of time. So Brian, can you just briefly introduce yourself before I move on to the next slide? Uh, sure thing. Uh, thanks, Kimberly. I appreciate you all having us here. Uh, I'm Brian Hacker. I'm the Vice President of Sales with Solar Energy World. Um, I have been doing residential solar in Maryland since 2009, uh, so I've been doing it for a little bit. Um, and I'm a NABCEP certified professional, so I've been doing PV technical sales um, for many, many years, and now I manage the team over at Solar Energy World. Um, we like doing these programs with Solar United because they do a great job educating people, and I'm just here today to help talk a little bit about power purchase agreements and how they make solar more accessible to, to more people that, that might have been left out in the past. Well, thank you as well, Brian. And as um, we talked, er uh, Aaron mentioned earlier that the uh, selection committee, uh, they chose uh, Solar Energy World for this um, Montgomery County co-op. So thank you, all, thank you, Brian, for um, being a part of this presentation. So, you know, how did Solar United Neighbors get started? It got started in 2007 from our executive director, Anya Spoldman, who lives in um, a part of Washington, D.C. She wanted to go solar, but she found that it was very challenging, very difficult, and she really didn't understand, not just the process, but just she didn't understand a lot of the technology and how it worked. So her, one of her, her um, son thought that, you know, my, this, this would be a, a great project. So he got one of his um, friends and they said, why don't we 
get up our neighbors and um, try to see if we can get a lot of people to go solo all at the same time. But that's what they did. They ended up getting, I think it was maybe 47 of their neighbors and, and friends to go solar. And that's how everything started. Now, one of the things that also inspired Anya, you see Anya here who is holding up the um, sign, is that she was also inspired by the documentary An Inconvenient Truth. I don't know if you all have heard of it, but it's actually a very good documentary um, talking about uh, climate change. And so that's how the nonprofit started and it started in Washington, D.C., and now it has gone over into 12 states because some people, you know, were thinking about, well, how can I bring this to my community? So now we're in 12 states. So when she was thinking about doing it, she was like, how can we just get everyone together and, and how can we fight for our energy right? And how can we take, you know, a group of people solar? So her vision, you know, became an actual reality. And so in the state of Maryland, um, through Solar United Navy, we have 675 total signed contracts with an installed um, of 5.5 megawatts. That's a lot of solar being installed in the um, state of Maryland. However, we do always have room for expansion. We want more people to go solar. And with that being said, we have 10 plus thousand supporters. So using that, um, you know, a group of people to help facilitate and to work um, around solar and going solar, is it, that's, a, that's a powerful group. So some of the things that we're going to talk about, and this is the order and how, you know, I want the facilitation to go, is that we're going to talk about the solar co-op and how it works. Then we're going to go into solar technology. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about the economics. And that's where Brian will come in and talk a little bit more about the power purchasing agreement, which is short for, which is um, PPA, which is short for power purchasing agreement. And um, then we'll take um, questions as well. So going solar in a group and a co-op. And as Anya was building this, uh, building Solar United Neighbors, you know, we wanted to, she wanted to address, you know, the barriers with group pricing. So that's like um, if you have a membership at Tacos or BJ's or Sam Club, you get a reduced cost because you're buying in bulk. So it's the same kind of uh, scenario that she was thinking when she got her neighbors together and the group of people together and said, "Listen, I have 47 people. We all want to go to so go. We all want to go solar at the same time. So what's the best price that you can give us?" So that all we all she, all she also was thinking like, "How can we support people going through the process?" Because as I stated earlier, you know, solar was just something that she didn't know about, and she wanted to become an informed consumer. And even as solar has evolved over the years, the technology has changed. It's gotten a lot better since 2007. And we would hear almost daily about either renewable energy in some form and solar, which is one of those components. So that started the solar movement. So one of the things in you know, building the coalition and the constituency is you know, building that base. So not only do we work with home, homeowners, but we also work with businesses, people that have farms, and also nonprofits. So these are some of the ways that you can be engaged in the co-op. You know, um, and this co-op, this specific co-op, we have also added EV charging to the co-op because some people have uh, solar and they may, may, may want, they may have an electric car and they want to um, add EV charging. So in this co-op, you can either do solar. You can do EV charging alone, solar alone, or you can do a combination of the both. So while you're going through this process, is that we want to be your support system. We want to help you navigate and go through the process. Become a stakeholder because this is stakeholder driven. By you becoming a member of the co-op, is that um, we don't select the installers. We let the uh, co-op members select the installers. So it's just a group of them that will go through the process, go through the RFPs, and look at the, um, you know, what would be the best fit or what they think would be the best fit for um, the whole entire co-op, you know, to choose this installer. So that's how Solar Energy World was, was chosen. Then the membership is for free. So I don't know how you get better than free or anything that is free, you know, it's a good deal. And there's a lot of things and a lot of advantages that you can get 
once you become a member, <clears throat> excuse me, once you become a member of the co-op, you take a, an aerial assessment of your roof. We support you with new or existing solar. Uh, we give a lot. We have a lot of resources. We have events like the solar um, solar tour, and I probably have done at least maybe seven to ten happy hours. So who doesn't want to be happy for an hour, right? So and as I stated earlier, is that you know the more people that we have joined together and fighting for the energy, right? The things that we have gotten past, like net metering. Uh, homeowner associations, and you know, we want to have the best interest in representing uh, solar homeowners or solar owners. And here's where it gets a little bit techy in the technology of, of, of solar. So, how does solar work? You know, so you see these great panels on buildings, and I'll just tell you personally, I have solar on my home, and I absolutely love, love it. So solar photovoltaic, and some, just to be short, may, you may hear the terminology solar PV. The PV just stands for photovoltaic, which converts your solar to energy. It takes the sun from, takes the energy from the sun and converts it to, to energy. And there's another system also called solar thermal and solar hot water. That uses solar energy to heat air or, or water. We're not going to focus on the solar thermal. We're just going to so focus on the solar um, photovoltaic. Solar voltaic, as I stated earlier, is just photovoltaic. It's just short for PV, and it converts your solar and solar to energy. These are some of the components that you'll see or you'll hear: the racking system and inverter. The racking system is just a mechanism that they use to um, how hold the panels to your uh, your roof, and it could be uh, the most common roof is a um, asphalt shingle roof. And as I stated, I have solar as well. I have a pitch roof. However, it can be also installed on a flat roof. And then the other mechanism is solar. I mean, is the inverter, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next slide. So as I was talking about the inverters, so you have a couple of different inverters. So you have string inverters. So you have string inverters and a DC optimizer, and then you have micro inverters. And the micro inverters are directly um, connected to the panel. So this is just a, a mechanism that takes the DC current and uh, turns it into alternating current. So when you see a series of solar panels in a series, that's what they call a solar array. So each panel can be, uh, say, two, this, the system that you see here is 12 panels, and each panel is 250 watts. So a series of those panels is, uh, is how you get your kilowatt. The kilowatt is the panel array, and uh, the, kilo, the, uh, the watt per panel is just the um, amount of power that is, um, uh, the amount of power that is used on, on that existing panel. And the system size is measured in kilowatts. The electricity production is measured in kilowatt hours. So when you think about kilowatt hours, just think about when you look at your utility bill. It has your um, kilowatt hours. How many kilowatt hours did you use for that month? That month will determine on how much your energy bill is going to be. So most homeowners install anywhere between three, <coughs> three kilowatt and twelve. 3 kilowatts and 12 kilowatts. I have a 4 kilowatt system and I love it. And it's based on your consumption and your goals. <clears throat> so this is just like a little summary and everything that I talked about in the previous slides. It just gives you a visual of how things are connected. So you have the solar panel um, on your roof that converts the sunlight to DC current. And then that energy is, goes through the inverter and it converts that electricity from DC current to AC current, which is your active current. Then it takes that electricity from your home that is that, and you use that and it's required. And any excess energy that you have that goes back out to the grid that's distributed to your neighbors or a grocery store or maybe even a school. And that's going to generate um, what they call uh, energy credits. So that's net metering, which I'll talk about in the next slide. Net metering is a way that 
the meter stands backwards, and as I said, stated earlier, is that that excess energy goes back out into the grid. Now, because your solar is tied to the grid, if your um, energy, if, if your lights go out or power goes down, the um, grid will, when it, when it shuts down, then you know your solar array is no longer working, and that's the safety mechanism. So, say for instance, you have a storm, your battery, I mean, your um, system goes down, the grid will, it will shut down your system because when you have people working on, you know, electrical poles, you can't have energy going through it because you can cause someone's death and it can harm someone. So, your net metering is measured in your annual billing cycle, daily or seasonal surpluses, and a percentage of your annual offset, and it's a one to one credit. So as I stated earlier about you know the system when the when the uh, grid goes down, the solar's not working. So if your solar's not working and your electricity is not working, then nothing's going. You know nothing's generating energy. So we get a lot of questions about battery storage and battery backup systems. And this is good if you live in areas that have frequent utility outages. So if you live somewhere that you know the, every time you have a storm your energy is going down or, your, you know, the uh, grid is going down. And also, it's good for what we call critical energy needs. So if you have well pumps that need to be on, if you have medical equipment that needs to be used for, you know, people that may have, be on oxygen machines, um, if you need your refrigerator because someone may have insulin, uh, you know, things of that nature. So that's called a criti critical energy need or criti critical energy backup system. Uh, and then also emergency and disaster preparedness. And you can relate that or look at that like um, we just had a derecho in I think it was Iowa or Idaho. So in those kind of situations, I think, you know, uh, it is very good to look into it if you can afford to have a battery backup system because sometimes you just never know when the grid is going to go down. And I think those people have been out of uh, energy for or power for at least two or three weeks uh, now. And I remember here in Maryland where we had a derecho back in 2012, and I remember it very vividly because it was the day before my father's funeral. And my block and my community was the only one that had like other people. And, you know, I just said that it was my, um, my daddy looking out for me. And a lot of people didn't have energy for it. And so I just wanted to share that story. And some of the disadvantages about having a battery is better for battery storage is it can come at a higher cost because this technology is, is fairly new and it's still, you know, being uh, technically advanced and the maintenance of it and the complex, complexity of it. So we, we um, did a, Aaron did a wonderful webinar uh, a couple of, I think it was about maybe a month ago, and you can find that on our YouTube channel if you want more information. Also, this is something that you can also bring up and talk to your installer to see if it's something they offer, what the cost may be, just to give you a little bit more um, information. So how in the world do you know uh, what makes a good roof for solar? So you, you know, you saw the um, uh, uh, racking system. So one of the benefits that we do once you become a member uh, of the uh, co-op is that we take an aerial assessment and look at your roof because we don't want your time to be wasted or anyone else. So we want to look at your roof and say, you know, okay, maybe you're a good fit to go solar. Maybe you're not a good fit to go solar. So if you're a good fit to go solar, some of the things we take in, into consideration is, is your roof facing south, east, or west? If it's facing south, you get the most sun. You can still do it east and west, you just don't get as much sun. And then we look at the shading. If you live in an area that has a lot of trees, for instance, Tacoma Park here in, in, in Merlin and Montgomery County, they have a lot of trees. So we have a lot of people that want to go solar, but they can't. So we also have a solution for that. That's community solar. We're not going to talk about that right, you know, right now or um, talk any, you know, about it later on. But there's a lot of information on, on our website around community solar. However, if you have, you know, no shading or limited shading, you can still probably go, go um, solar. And we also look at how much roof space do you have. So if you have a little teeny old tiny roof, you may not be able to get solar if you have 
a medium sized roof or you know an average roof that you're more, more likely to um, be able to get solar. These are some of the frequently asked questions that we get a lot is about warranty. And when you become a member of the solar co-op, when we issue out um, an RFP, one of the things that we ask, like, what are your warranties? And what does your warranty look like? Most panels have a 25-year warranty, and the inverters have anywhere between 10 and 25 years. We also get questions about um, homeowner's insurance. Each company is different. So you want to talk and have a conversation with your homeowner's insurance company to see how you know your solar system will be um, you know uh, included into your homeowner insurance. And then the maintenance. You get a lot of questions about maintenance because people want to know: Do I have to power wash my solar panels down, or you know when it's what happens when it snows? Um, they are virtually maintenance free. You don't have to do anything to them, you know, for maintenance. Um, and like I said, I have solar, I have a pitch roof, and you will not see me climbing on my roof to do anything to my solar panels. And I've had it for two years. I haven't had any problems. It's been, you know, standard through um, storms, hail, rain, snow, you name it. And I haven't had a problem out of my um, solar soap. That's um, as far as the maintenance. How long does the system last? The system can last anywhere from 25 plus years. So that's a long time. What about um, HOAs? If you, have, you live in an HOA, can you get solar? Yes, you can. HOA cannot stop you from getting solar. Sometimes they may try to give you a hard time, but they can't stop you from going solar. And one of the famous questions that we get is, can I get solar if I live in a historic dis district? Yes, you can get solar if you live in a historic district. However, we encourage people to, you know, look into your own, you know, local historic district and, you know, what all the rules and the regulations. And this is also something that the installer should be very knowledgeable about. So you can bring that up to them and they um, will be able to help you to facilitate going through, you know, what it is that your um, historic district says that you can or cannot do. So as I stated earlier about the um, this co-op is the solar and EV charging. So you can do solar alone, you can do EV charging alone, or you can do a combination of both. And that's a discussion you can also have with your installer. So this is the combo. This person um, already had solar and they just wanted to add an EV charger. And I, I'm halfway there, so I have a hybrid. And I'm looking into getting a um, electric car. So somehow, somewhere in the future, I will be thinking about getting an EV charger. Now, um, these are level two EV charging mechanisms, and you'll see a lot of them in the public and commercial uses. So I live in Baltimore City, so I'm starting to see more and more um, level two um, EV charging in public areas. They just put up maybe about four. And at, in the parking lot of my local library, I see several of them downtown. And the best thing, one of the best things I think that you could do is have an EV charging station right at your residential home. So before we go into solar economics, I want to see if there has been any questions. Thanks, Kimberly. Uh, we don't have any questions yet, but again, feel free to type any questions uh, in the chat box. Um, here's one from Mark. I understand that Montgomery County, Maryland has recently changed the code for rooftop panels. What is the implication for those changes uh, for homeowners? What I assume is he's probably mentioning the fire code. The and fire I don't know, code. Yeah, Kimberly or maybe even Brian might speak to that. Uh, I'd be happy to take it if you want, want me to. Yeah, sure. So, ahead. Montgomery County uh, recently implemented a, a version of the um, the IRC, which is the uh, International Residential Code, uh, for 2018. And in that code, it had some very specific requirements for uh, roof usage, fire lanes, and then fire access pathways. And so, one of those things is is if you're using a certain percentage of the roof, it determines how far down from the ridge of the roof you need to install solar panels. 
basically what the fire lanes have done is they've kind of limited the amount of real estate we can take up on a roof with solar. Um, we need to just leave very clearly defined um, pathways. Um, the 2018 IRC is a lot less strict than some other areas like Baltimore County in Maryland, where um, you have extremely, um, basically, you know, 20, 30% of the roof is needs to be left um, available for access. Uh, what they're requiring, I believe, in Montgomery County is a single three-foot pathway um, from basically the bottom edge of the roof all the way up to the ridge, and then access on both sides of the roof or on all sides of the roof. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, right, take take a message, right? Less uh, less real estate for panels potentially. Right. All right. That's. Uh, okay. I don't yep. see any other. Question? Don't see any other questions, but um, yeah, we'll have you move on, Kimberly. Talk about economics, and if there's something that we didn't get to, might have some time at the end as well. So go ahead. Okay. So solar economics. Want to save you some money on your electricity bill. And I'm just going to tell you my own personal story. As I stated, I have a four kilowatt system. I've had it for two years and I have reduced my energy cost by at least 30%. So I love my solar because I'm saving money. So some of the things you want to, you know, take into consideration. Your solar is priced by the watt, not by the panel. Solar is long term, so you have no moving parts. Lifespan is about 25 years. And uh, the average residential, and it's based off your average residential utility rate. So each utility area has, you know, a different rate, so that you measure that way. And as you know, the rising energy prices continue to go up. I um, have made it a habit a little bit more to pay more attention to my utility bill. And one of the things that I noticed on my utility bill that I believe since October is going up, um, is going to rise 2.8%. In October, so yeah, energy prices are already already going up. So these are some of the things you also. Um, this is just a scenario and a sample um, of what it looks like in in Merlin. So the average Montgomery County solar co-op price is about two dollars and forty cents um, a watt, and we're just going to use the four kilowatt system as an example. So that would range about six thousand nine hundred dollars. However, you also get a 26% federal tax credit. Now, last year it was 30%. This year it's 20%, 26%. Next year it goes down to 22%. And then it will start to phase out. So, and not in the state you knew it. So, you um, get another reduced cost of about $2,500. Then, Maryland Residential has a, a clean energy grant that is a taxable grant. And that's a thousand dollars. So that brings the net cost for a nine, I mean for a four kilowatt system to be about six thousand one hundred dollars. And then you get some additional credits. Um, as I've talked about uh, the net metering and you know the, the solar renewable energy credit earlier, and that's just a credit that from your production over you know the annual estimated cost. So the rec change from you know just different jurisdictions so it's different in Maryland than it is in DC or Virginia. And with that being said is that the estimated lifetime savings over 25 years is about twenty two thousand one hundred dollars. So twenty two thousand dollars if you save over 25 years, I look at it like I cannot not pay my energy bill. That's one bill that you have to pay. And if you have to pay it, then why not find a way where you can reduce your energy cost as well as have a, a savings? And I think $22,000 is a nice chunk of change that could be sitting somewhere in my retirement account so that when I retire, I can go off and you know take a nice vacation. So that brings your net profit down to about $16,000. And I think that's you know pretty good. The average return on your investment depending on what your, your size of your system is, can be anywhere between 10 years or less. So here's one of the ways that you can um, finance your system. And of course, cash is king. So if you have the resources where you can pay for cash, I don't think anybody's going to turn away anybody who's going to pay cash for a system. However, if you don't have a pile of cash, you know, sitting in the bank that you want to, you know, use to, um, you know, finance your, your, your system, is that you can use loans. We have a great 
partnership with Montgomery County Green Bank that has a great um uh, re that's a great resource and a great um instrument that you can use as well. Then you can use a standard loan, or solar loans, or bridge loans, or a HELOC. A HELOC is just a, a home equity line of credit that you can use. And here is where um Ryan is going to come in and talk a little bit more in the third party ownership. And that's around leasing and power purchasing agreements. And I'll just share with you as well is the way I got my system was through a power purchasing agreement. And I do not regret it. I love it because I'm still taking the benefit of reducing my energy about 30% over two years. And um, I love it. I can't even speak enough about it. But Brian is going to delve a little bit more in detail around uh, the um, power purchasing agreement. I'm going to turn it over to you, Brian. Thanks, Kimberly. I appreciate it. Um, so, you know, one of the things I always like to start off with when we're talking about power purchase agreements and solar third-party ownership is power purchase agreements absolutely wouldn't exist if it didn't make sense to buy and own solar. Like, it definitely wouldn't make sense. What a power purchase agreement is is where a third-party company pays for the solar to be installed on your house, and they're offering to sell you all of the energy generated by that solar array. Um, so obviously buying solar has to make a lot of sense if a company would be willing to pay to do that on your home. Um, with that being said though, power purchase agreements do a lot of really great things for, depending on how you're looking at kind of your investment in solar. If you are looking at this solely from a point of, you know, how, how can I best gain the most return on my, my money that I have sitting in the bank today. Um, solar is a phenomenal investment. Uh, with these co-op programs, you see rates of return in the 12, 14% range, which are, are pretty unheard of these days. But a power purchase agreement in most scenarios is going to end up saving you 20 to 30% on your energy bill from the start. So the way these systems work is they actually, you know, don't cost anything to the homeowner installing the system. And the only thing they're doing is basically taking, you know, one power company that generates power at a uh, power plant, and they're swapping it for another one that's located there on their roof. Um, and the other big advantage to that is for a lot of people these days that are looking to do refis and things like that, is you're not taking out a large loan to pay for your solar array. You're not taking your money out of some type of investment account or savings vehicle. Um, so you're not jeopardizing kind of your total available cash flow, which also really opens up power purchase agreements to, to more people out there that wouldn't necessarily be able to take out a, a $30,000 loan for solar panels and then go buy a car if they needed to, if something happened to their, their current vehicle. Uh, we can go to the next slide. So, uh, at Solar Energy World, we call our power purchase agreement the, the rate guardian. Uh, but basically, there's there's no upfront costs. Uh, we've got a couple of different plans, but depending on the quality of the home or the site for solar, uh, in a lot of instances, we can do actually fixed rates for electricity. That means you're locking in your electricity rate for the next 25 years. Um, the average inflation rate um, of electricity prices in Maryland over the last uh, 10 or 20 years um, has been about 5 or 6%. Um, so being able to lock your rate in, and if I'm getting, you know, 10 or 20% less than today's prices, that means I'm paying, say, 2017 or 2016 electricity prices all the way out to the year 2045, um, which is a pretty amazing thing to be able to accomplish. Um, it would be like if you had the ability to, you know, get a gas card where, um, you know, all of your gas for that car that you owned was, you know, 50 cents a gallon or a dollar a gallon. And so the next owner that comes and buys that car from you, he gets that gas card to follow the car along. Um, and that's kind of the same thing with the power purchase agreement is, is they're designed to transfer along with the property. So it's like any other type of home improvement. Um, you know, it's guaranteeing a lower cost of electricity throughout its entire life. Um, and then it also includes all maintenance, all warranties, all production guarantees. Um, that's another big thing with our power purchase agreements is, is most of them guarantee the system production. So if it's not hitting the goals, they're required to reimburse you. We can go to the next one. Um, 
And so why is Solar Energy World's uh, Rate Guardian Power Purchase Agreement better than others? Um, well, one of the big things is we do have the ability to offer a fixed rate in most instances. Um, that's something that doesn't exist out there in, in just about the rest of the industry. Um, also, the nice thing about it is, and Kimberly talked about net metering, but for the most part, the way solar panels produce energy is they produce most of their energy in the spring, summer, and fall, um, and not as much energy in the winter. So a system would be producing an abundance of energy in the summer and, and into the fall, and then that credit that you've built up on your system is actually just rolling through and carrying you through the winter months throughout the year. Um, and it's just a matter of kind of how much it can offset. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, and this is just kind of a, a quick recap, you know, comparing a purchase to a power purchase agreement. So, you know, when you look at the savings, obviously on a purchase, the monthly bill savings can be 100% if you've paid cash for the entire system and you don't have any type of payment for it. Um, but on a power purchase agreement, there's no upfront payment. You're immediately saving money, and then you're guaranteed to save money throughout the life of that system. Things like the federal income tax credit, that's taken by the system owner, but that's being applied to kind of the costs of the system. Um, do you own the system? Um, most of these power purchase agreements allow you to purchase the system after the fifth year, and that's because that's how long it takes the provider to get their tax incentives. Um, and then the systems are all warrantied and maintained throughout the entire life of that system. Did anybody have any questions on power purchase agreements? That was a, a good presentation, Brian. Um, I'm not seeing any um, any questions from the panelists on this or from the attendees. Everybody uh, just got it. Everybody got a cold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think it was. Think it was the graphics. Think it went well. <laughs> so I just want to reiterate what Brian said. Um, as I stated, I went through the power purchasing agreement because I thought that was the best choice for me because I. I I'm in the business and I've been in, you know, um, work, doing a lot around clean energy and renewable energy. And um, like you said, I thought it was the best benefit for me. However, every month, you know, it has reduced my energy costs. So I have no problem with the owner taking, you know, the incentives and, and those things because I'm still getting a reduced energy bill. I'm happy when I see my energy bill is less and less and less every month. And, um, you know, so... Thank you, Brian, for that presentation. So I know this has, you know, been a lot of information in a short period of time. So you may be thinking like, well, what do I do next? Or what do I do? And you already taken the first step. And the first step is coming here and learning about solar and EV charging and how to join um, with no obligation to become, a, and there's no obligation for you to become a member of the co-op. And as I stated earlier, the member, to become a co-op member is free. We want you to spread the word, to grow the group and the engagement. And at this point, the Montgomery County um, co-op has about 55 members. So you have one more week for people to sign up because it ends August the 31st. So we have, uh, you know, just been pushing the word out a little bit more to get more signups because our goal is 200 members. And I believe for Montgomery County, this will be the biggest um, co-op that they have had. So we are just, you know, short of five people to hit our 200 goal. So maybe we'll even go over 200. So that would be exciting. We want you to stay tuned for a lot of our updates. And as I stated earlier, to visit our website, our YouTube page has a wealth of information and some of the info sessions that were um, recorded on different topics. Um, far as like, if you want more infor information around the battery um, storage, which is a part of you continuing to learn. And um, as Brian uh, is, has been chosen, Solar Energy World has been chosen to be the um, installer just be ready for your uh, virtual site visit and your proposal once you become a, a member. And uh, going through the installation phase, um, which is one of the things we also work with Solar Energy World and um, us to help to facilitate so to you know try and make sure that you have a smooth uh, um, experience. And then at the end, we have a you know big uh, celebration and 
continue to fight for our solar rights. And so in the celebration, I know that we have done some things in person. We usually would have like a little party somewhere or a little happy hour, you know, and, and get to meet a lot of the, um, you know, co-op members in person. But in this virtual area and COVID area, area that we're in, we're just trying to figure out and, you know, what would the celebration, what is the celebration going to look like? for um, this particular co-op. So just, you know, stay tuned and, you know, stay in, in, informed and, you know, updates and visit our Facebook page has a lot of information on it as well. Kimberly, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we actually had a, a question, I think that relates to power purchase agreements from Mark. Okay. If I could uh, interrupt you for a sec, I think it's a good one. Is sure. there, and this is Mark's question, is there any difference in home appreciation between those two options, which I assume are a cash purchase and a PPA? So what would be the implications for the sale of a home? And I don't know, Brian, if, if you want to take yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take that one. So with power purchase agreements, all of the, the, the vendors that we work with for power purchase agreements, they guarantee the transfer of the system to a new owner. Um, and, and most of them kind of provide options there. So if you're looking to sell your house, um, Sunrun is one of the primary partners that we have, and they're the largest power purchase agreement provider in the country. Um, what Sunrun does is they guarantee transfer. They actually assign a transfer team member uh, to work with both you, your real estate agent, your buyer's agent, and your buyer to kind of educate them as to their options in the process. Either they can just transfer over that power purchase agreement to the new owner, or depending on how long you've been in the house, if you've been in the house for more than that five years, you could actually transfer the system as ownership. Um, if you're transferring the system as ownership, it would have the same value um, to the to the bottom line of the home as it would if the system were owned wholly outright, um, because you're you're basically transferring solar ownership to that new owner. There wouldn't be any payments; it would be paid paid for with proceeds from the sale. Um, so power purchase agreements are kind of designed to transfer from owner to owner. Now, if you're transferring just that power purchase agreement today, there's not any studies that I've seen in terms of um, uh, you know, appraisal studies or anything that show adding home value to a leased solar array, even though you can prove savings. And in, in most cases, you're saving, you know, 20, 30, 40% on the cost of energy um, for that home. So it would be a, a neutral to the actual home value if the system was being transferred as a lease. And if it were being transferred as ownership, um, the current studies I'm seeing, I think Zillow uh, just this past year had a great article that said that the average home value in Maryland was going up by about 4.1% for having solar on a home. Great Thank question. You. Great that question. Was, Thanks, that was Brian. a great question. Um, I, I have a question, Brian, around power purchase agreement. So um, if you say that you have a power purchase agreement through Solar Energy World, what is your partnership with Sunrun? Because don't they do, don't they install solar as well? Sunrun contracts out solar install, but so they also, Sunrun was created and we've been a partner since they, they actually came into existence. Their, their business model um, has always been in, in major markets to rely heavily on local installation partners. So Solar Energy World is the only Sunrun partner in the mid-Atlantic. Um, and so Sunrun does do their direct business, which they do all kind of from their phone sales and things like that. Um, but Solar Energy World is actually the, the, the Sunrun authorized partner here in the state. Okay. So they don't have reps here doing sales in the state. They contract installation work when they do direct. Um, the difference between doing business with Solar Energy World and Sunrun or Sunrun Direct is you're getting the advantages of having us as kind of the servicer of the system, but also you get to use, you know, we choose the hardware that we use for our installs, things like that. Sunrun Direct typically tends to go towards the, the less expensive options. So they would be panels that have like white lines on them or, or the bluer shade type panels, things like that. We use only okay. flat black solar panels. Okay. My reason for asking that question, Brian, is because I had another solar company that did my install. However, all of my documents came from Sunrun. Okay. So, yeah, that's why I asked that question. That was probably <laughs> one, of their, one of their subcontractors. Yeah, okay. All right. Hey, so hey, Kimberly and yes. Brian, I actually have a couple folks that have had their uh, hands raised. So what I think I'm going to do is maybe allow them to talk, take them off of mute. 
Um, and we'll start with Ronald. And let's see if we can do that. Ronald, uh, or no, uh, yeah, or Howard, actually. Let's see if we can. Howard, uh, if you can, if you can speak, uh, if you have a question. I'm not sure if we. It looks like he's unmuted. I don't yeah, see it, it looks like he's unmuted. So Howard, if you have a question, you can go ahead and. What about Ronald? Yes, good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Yes, good, yes, good afternoon. Hi, Ronald. Yeah, hi. My, my question is, um, is this cooperative available for Prince George's County residents that might be, uh, can they join that may be right on the line in Tacoma Park? Uh, in pr the first question in my comment is, I have, I produce a uh, weekly show called Solar Now in the Future his economic impact on Black America, and I did have the privilege of having Mr. Tom Dito, Dio, who's the executive officer for the Green Bank, and we did talk about uh, this webinar and some of the things that you that 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 you that you're doing. I think it's it's excellent. So uh, that's my only comment. But I wanted to know if the PG County residents can, in fact, join the co-op. So, <clears throat> excuse me, in uh, PG County, we do not have a co-op yet. However, I'm looking to, I think I had like two or three people who have asked me about a PG County co-op. So what I'm going to do is probably early next year is start another co-op in um, PG County. All right, thank you. And, and Mr. Ronald, I believe you contacted me and I responded to your email. Yes, yes you did. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. That's a good question. And we'll try Howard one more time to see if he might be uh, able to ask a question. If not, we'll move on. Howard, do you have a question? I guess not. Okay, so maybe Howard yep. doesn't have a question. All right, Kimberly. Okay, maybe he's using that as the high five symbol. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Okay, so our website is a very helpful and useful resource. We have a ton of wealth of information on our um, solar co op, Muni Solar. We have different guides on there, we have information about mem different memberships not just for the co-op, but we also have other memberships that you can become a part of. We have ways that you can get involved and volunteer. So our website is a wealth of information. So I would suggest just go on our website, you know, look what it is that, you know, we do and a little bit more in detail how you can get involved. And you can always send us an email as well. Yeah, and also to note, I posted the link to the co-op website for the Montgomery County Solar EV Charger Co-op in the chat. And so that's available to you and we would encourage you all to join. And um, I also want people to, um, you know, stay in contact because we have a lot of, you know, good things coming up. Like we talked about the um, solar tour and then we have the Solar Congress that is coming up in, in a couple of months. So we have a lot of different events and, you know, working things out how and what it's going to look like virtually in this era of COVID. To stay in contact, you can reach us at www.solarunitedneighbors.org um, slash Merlin. I know um, Aaron said that he has put our information in the chat. And you can always email Merlin team at solarunitedneighbors.org and continue to tell your friends and your neighbors about the co-op. And as Mr. Ronald um, asked about PG County, we may not have a co-op in your specific county right now. However, we're looking to, you know, have more co-ops in 2021. The Montgomery County Co-op is closing August the 31st, so people still have time to sign up and become a uh, member. And as I stated earlier, is that solar 
Energy World is the chosen installer for this particular co-op. And Brian Hacker, um, I stay in constant contact with him at DCP to, keep up, to get updates, see what's going on, see how we can help to facilitate and work together and make this process really um, a smooth one for our co-op members. So are there any other questions and uh, or comments coming from Brian or Aaron? No, I'm seeing none in the chat. And again, I echo uh, appreciation for everybody to join. Uh, we pasted a lot of different, um, a lot of different resources in there, as well as our uh, Maryland Solar Team email. So if there's something we didn't uh, cover, you can always reach out to us, uh, Kimberly, and our colleagues via email. Thank you. So, thank you all for having me. And solar you're, energy right, you're, you're very welcome. So Brian, I want to thank you for taking the time. I know you're a very busy guy, um, but I also know that you love talking about solar. <laughs> uh, talk about it a little bit. <laughs> my, my, my family prefers when I do it on webinars versus just not interrupting. <laughs> so I want to thank you all for joining us this evening, and I look forward to doing more solar um, info sessions and happy hours. And so with that being said, I believe we have um, beat our deadline by 10 minutes, so I'm going to give you 10 minutes back for you to get off of Zoom and all these webinars that you've probably been on all day and give you some time back to go join, uh, have some fun with your family and friends. So thank you and God bless. Thanks all. See ya. <laughs>